Hey guys, for today's video, I wanted to debunk three exercise lies that you have been told. Three common misconceptions that might be getting in your way of actually achieving and reaching your goals. So I want to break those down, talk about the science behind them, and then give you some tips on how you can actually move forward and do what's best for your body as proven by science. So the first thing I want to talk about is the duration of exercise. I have friends who go to the gym and they won't even consider it a workout unless they actually worked out for an hour or more. Now, you may have heard of high intensity interval training, but that is a perfect example of working out longer doesn't mean better results. When it actually comes to muscle fatigue, that is what you want to aim for because that breakdown of muscle is what promotes the body to reheal, which means stronger muscle, bigger muscle, and muscle that burns more calories overall. Just the way people always say it's about quality, not quantity, it's the same thing for your workout. You could work out for two hours, but if you're really not challenging your body, it's is it really going to do any good? Whereas if you are doing a workout that is kind of pushing your body's limits, um, and especially if you're kind of reaching your VO2 max, which means like the maximum oxygen output, it means you're in a really good zone for working out, that means that your body is going to get more benefit because you're actually challenging it, pressing those limits, and those limitations will rise over time. And again, always listen to your body because if you work out with an injury or do something that's bad for your body, you could be out of commission for a long time. And it's a lot better to push your body to a healthy limit rather than go overboard and be out of commission for a couple months. So keep that in mind. The second thing we have to talk about is the fact that exercise actually makes you hungrier. Now, I know this is an unpopular opinion, but the idea that exercise burns a ton of calories and you can eat whatever you want as long as you exercise enough really is a false one. Regardless of how unhealthy or healthy you are eating, calories do count. Even if they don't count the same way, depending on the macronutrients, for instance, fat calories are different than protein calories, which are different than carbohydrate calories. Even though that can be different, overall, the general amount of calories do still matter. Now, what's interesting about exercise is that it does actually make you hungrier. When you exercise, again, you are temporarily damaging those muscles so that you can regrow them. You are working your body out and you are expending energy. It is natural by evolution for your body to want to regain those calories and to refuel. And especially if you don't eat after you work out, working out and not eating can cause cravings and a lot of hunger later on. Now, there are big companies um, such as Coca-Cola who say, oh, well, you can drink a Coca-Cola, it's only 160 calories, and as long as you burn it off, you'll be fine. But the truth is, how long are you gonna have to exercise to burn off that 160 calories? If you're going to eat a burger, how long are you going to have to work out to burn off those extra calories? Um, if weight loss is your goal or if muscle building is your goal. And the truth behind that is, especially for someone who is looking to lose weight, expect yourself to be hungrier after a workout or to be hungrier when you start working out. A lot of people start working out, they eat salads and then they feel extremely fatigued. And number one, it's because they're expending their energy and they're not refueling their body with adequate caloric intake. And then number two, they're getting disappointed that they're trying to lose weight and trying to diet while they're exercising more. So expect to be hungrier and expect to listen to your body. And when it comes to people who are trying to gain weight, especially when it comes to muscle, you also have to think that you can use this to your advantage. If you know that your body is going to be hungrier, refuel at the right times. For instance, refuel with carbohydrate right after your workout because that's when your muscle can really use and store those simple carbohydrates. Whereas if it's a couple hours after you work out, you want to go for a more slow digesting carbohydrate, healthy fats, and healthy proteins. And so again, it's kind of not talked about because there are industries such as food and sugar that are going to tell you that as long as you burn it off, you're fine. But when you think about it, it's a lot harder to burn off an extra burger and fries than it is to make healthier choices in the first place. And if you are exercising, you are going to be hungrier overall. So plan for that and prepare for that so that it doesn't blunt or hinder any of your good healthy results. The very last thing we have to talk about is muscle fatigue and muscle pain. You know like when you work out or when you do some sort of activity that you're not used to and you start to feel muscle aches and pains a day or two after? Normally this comes 24 hours to 48 hours after that workout or after that activity. And in the past a lot of people will say, oh that's lactic acid buildup in the muscles. Well the truth is, that's not actually lactic acid. Lactic acid is a byproduct of us using and burning energy. For instance, when we work out and our muscles contract, lactic acid is a byproduct. And lactic acid is a quintessential important part of working out, of muscle function, and of muscle building. But at the same time, when you actually look at clinical research, the amount of lactic acid dramatically drops within 24 hours after that workout is done. 
And unless you have some sort of genetic difference or some sort of immunodysfunction, the lactic acid is almost completely gone a couple days after. Now what's weird is that a couple days after is when you start to feel sore. So if lactic acid was the cause for the muscle soreness, it would make sense that we feel sore directly after a workout and it's intense for a day and then it gets better as the lactic acid is dissolved and reabsorbed into the body. But the truth is it's kind of opposite. We have this high lactic acid right after we work out and then it starts to go down and then we get sore two or three days later. Why is that? Now the professor that I studied under had a speculation that it's actually the inflammation response. His theory and his hypothesis that is backed by both studies and the work that he's done in sports nutrition is that the actual inflammatory response, the body trying to heal itself, is what's causing that muscle fatigue, soreness, and pain. Because also what's interesting is that when you look at your workouts, the second after you work out, you're not rebuilding muscle. When you're lifting heavy weights or running up a mountain, you're not building muscle, you're tearing the muscle. And once you tear that muscle, the body rebuilds it over the next couple days to make you stronger, to give you more muscle that burns more calories and makes you stronger and endure more overall. But the actual peak of that comes between three and seven days after. So if you lifted heavy weights, that's the tearing of the muscle. The rebuilding is actually happening three to seven days later which is why you should be refueling and eating your high protein three to seven days later, not dramatically after a workout. Dramatically after a workout, your muscle is fatigued from carbohydrates, which is why it's best to refuel with carbs directly after you expend that energy, and then three days later, build that back up. But what's interesting is that that pain comes at that time that the muscle is actually healing. And the inflammatory process is a multiple step biological process that kind of sends help signals to the affected area, kind of cleans and rebuilds everything, and then remediates and gets rid of all of those cytokines and those inflammatory properties. So that inflammatory process is a multi-step process that is quintessential to healing, whether it's your muscles or whether it's a cut or even a broken bone. But again, what's interesting is that that muscle actually healing and rebuilding is at the same time of that inflammation process. So again, Dr. Wilson's hypothesis and theory and what the actual science and medical research says kind of points to it being that inflammatory response, not lactic acid. So keep that in mind. So when it comes down to it, I really hope that you learned something here. I hope that this can help you work out smarter, not harder, and achieve your goals more effectively. If there's anyone else that you know who is a fitness freak or someone who's really looking to get in shape or change their body for the better, consider sharing this with them because when you do share it with them, it can help improve their life and it helps me spread the message of health, love, and reality so that we don't succumb to these myths and these misconceptions that are fed to us through media or just through outdated medical and scientific information. So that being said, remember that science is always changing and educating yourself is one of the most important things you can do. Because there are new studies coming out all the time, new information can be found that can change old myths, old conceptions, um, and provide new light into how our bodies function and what's best for us. So that being said, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know. Consider sharing it to help somebody else. And of course, remember that it is you that puts the you in beautiful. I hope that you guys are having a great day and I can't wait to talk to you all in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.